No, I'm just teasing. Anyway, okay, we're on page 54. This would be it. Um, okay, page 30, I mean 54, ministry training involvement. I'm going to read through quickly, and then I'll have some things to share as I go. So the leadership principle, am I supposed to be doing this, Clint? Yeah, just click the, the, to the right or the face it, it off there. Okay, there you go. So the leadership principle, the minister has a calling to equip the saints, including children, for building up the body of Christ. The Ezekiel principle, <clears throat> spiritual encounters with God come through taking children into the spiritual depths with him. They encounter him as you take them down a path that finds him. So this is, like it says, this is the draw of the ministry. Choosing types of ministry opportunities for the children in your church is very important. Trust me, this is the draw. They love it. You can't do one without the other. Plus, this is kind of puts the feet to what they're, you know, they're, puts the action to what they're learning. So, um, so first of all, we're going to go through just the process. So choose what type of training you want to offer. Start simple. We'll talk more about that in a second. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that was uh, Memorial Baptist Church. They, their kids came up with motions to praise them. So. Oh, did y'all get the Keep It Start Simple? Did y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Did you want me to watch that? No, it's okay. okay. It's, it's basically what it shows is they, let, they had a song and the kids came up with motions. Gotcha. Okay. Add more complicated training as children mature and when your program is up and running. I'm going to let you fill this in and then I'll go back and talk. Do not try to do too much in the beginning. It's more important to stay strong. Or start strong and then add elements to do the training as you go. <clears throat> and acquire proper rooms and facility for the training and small group discipleship. So you you don't just choose your training just haphazardly. Don't just say, oh, we want to do these five things. Well, first of all, you need to pray about it. But then you have to see what adults you have um, or older teenagers, college students. You need to see what gifts they have because, <clears throat> trust me, they would not want me leading an art group. Okay, because I have no artistic abilities at all. That's not my gifting, and it would be very hard for me to, you want people to lead out of their passions and out of their gifts and talents. And so you need to look around at your team and kind of brainstorm. So that's what we do every year. Kind of sit and say, you know, what, you know, the people, new people that join our team, how has God gifted you? Just talk to me and tell me some things. One lady one year said, I don't really do anything. I mean, the only creative thing I do is ballooning. And I'm like, perfect. Perfect, and it's been one of our best ministry teams for Nehemiah Kids. So we have to choose Nehemiah Kid. We have Nehemiah Kid um, ministry teams. We have LIT ministry teams, and I try. Some of them are the same, but many of them are different. So they have something to look forward to. So that way we can kind of. Oh, I'm sorry. This one's only for Nehemiah Kids, or this one's only for LIT, and it's kind of a fun thing for them to look forward to. But you look and see what your team is gifted in, and then that's how you choose what ministry teams you're going to offer. We choose. I mean, we have 13 teams, you know, that we <clears throat> kids can choose from, but we've been doing this for six years. When we first started, we didn't have 13 teams. So start simple, just like it says here. Start simple. Um, praise team. Dow rods. Um, you say, well, nobody on our team does dow rods. Well, that's not hard. You can YouTube a lot of things. And just, you know, if you can't, um, if you're not creative in that way, just Google creative arts ministries, and you can find lots of things people can watch. But... The whole point is for your kids to be involved in the process. So what you don't want to do is go look on everything on YouTube and mimic everything you see because you want the kids. So our dowel rod things, our splat, everything that we do is the kid's idea. You want them to take the lead in it. So you have the adult there that's passionate about that so that way they can kind of steer, steer it down the right path. But you want the kids to be a part of that process and own it. And so at the end, when they, they're doing their dowel rod routine, I mean, I tell parents, your child came up with that whole thing. You know, your children collectively came up with that. Same thing with Splat. They choose the song. They choose what um, we let them go through the process. Splat is kids painting to music. Um, and, and really, sometimes it's the ones that just enjoy art, but maybe they're not schooled in art that do better. We've had artists, professional artists, come and try to lead Splat. And for us personally, it doesn't work because they are so professional and per perfectionist that um, they want the kids to be that way. And it's hard for them to let go of the control, you know. Can I ask a question just yes. practically? So let's say you've got 20 kids mm -hmm. and, and you've got um, three ministries, but all of them choose one, 
one track? Is that possible? Do you close it after a certain amount of people? Yeah. So when we um, have our minister teams, we go through and we say this is the max amount for each team. And so, um, for instance, we have Master Trades, which um, is a group of men that work with kids learning how to use sanders, hammers, a skill saw. They use all these different things. Well, you can't have a ton of kids down there. And so we try to keep that team to no more than six you know, sometimes we'll open it to eight, but try to get six. So we just have a max number for each one of those ministry teams. So on our opening night for our spring and fall semester, because we have kids switch, so they get to do two different things throughout the year. I don't know if everybody does it for the whole year, but we do two things. So the opening night, we do commercial night, and all of our ministry team leaders stand up and do a commercial. They have to do a really funny commercial to kind of advertise their ministry team. And the kids have a form, and it has all the ministry team list listed, and they have to do a one, two, and a three. First choice, second choice, third choice. And we explain to the kids, you may not get your first choice, but you'll definitely get your second or third. And then next semester, if you didn't get your first choice, then we try to give them, you know, the next one. So, and we just, do, we don't get to choose the same team both semesters, so you kind of have to take turns that way. Great idea. So, it really helps. And, you know, some kids, we, we just tell them, you know, you kind of have to, oh, there's our Pastor Mike. Hello, Pastor Mike. That's why I didn't answer your phone, Paul. I see. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway, listen, I'll just brag on our pastor since he's in here. The best thing about Hillcrest is that our pastor is so passionate about children's ministry. So, I hear a lot of stories that they have to fight for the ministry in their church, but we don't have to do that here. He's the biggest fan of our kids here, so it makes a big difference. It's easy when you got a good one at the head so, of the children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Your husband says you might need it. Thank you, thank you. So, um, anyway, just let the kids kind of choose. We want them to choose, and we tell parents, we don't want like the parents to kind of, I'm usually leading the parent meeting. At the same time, they're in the commercial room with the ministry team, because it's on opening night, so I always have the parents. And I tell them, at the end of the night, your kids are going to come home with a form, and they have to turn it in by next Sunday. And do not try to coerce them to where you think they need to go. You let them go where they feel like they're supposed to be in. And we kind of explain to kids, you know, this is the way, you know, we're going to teach you how to use your gift to share the gospel and to use it in ministry. And so it's not just, it is for fun, but we want them to also learn. So it's been really neat to see that they, they take ballooning into, we let them check out the balloon pumps and balloons. And so they're out on the playground sharing, or in their neighborhood, sharing the gospel by making the balloons. Can I ask questions? Would uh -huh. you mind if I uh -huh. ask questions? So let's say a kid's in a, in a certain group and he just doesn't fit in with the rest of the kids or um, he doesn't enjoy what he's mm -hmm. doing. Do you, do you yes. flip him over? We do. We okay. do. If it's, you, you know, we try, to, we try to go in and kind of see well, what's kind of going on, talk to the leader. We don't just automatically, just because you don't like it one week, go to the next one. But we try to assess it. But if it's not working out, it's clearly not what they thought it would be or it's just not a good fit for them because we want them to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's... We want it to be fun for them as well as meaningful, and if they're not having a good time, that kind of, again, that's the draw. So, yeah. We do that with our disciple groups sometimes as well. I mean, if, sometimes some kids and some adults and some leaders just don't click. It doesn't mesh. And so you're going to de defeat your purpose if you don't have a little bit of grace moving kids around. So, Do you limit the grades that can be in any of your ministry teams? Yes. So we have, um, on our form, it would show... Nehemiah kids, first through fourth, and there's a list of those. And then we have fourth through sixth, so we let our top fourth graders and our fifth and sixth graders kind of choose. And then we have some that are just LIT. So to spread them all across because, you know, you have a lot of kids, and ministry teams, if they get too big, they lose the effectiveness. You can only have some certain amount of kids. You know, Lego Mation, if you have 15 kids in there, you can't hardly get anything done. So we have to limit it to six or eight, you know. So... I thought I would just kind of go through a list real quick, and then I'll go to the next part about ministry involvement. These are ministry teams that we've done here, um, just to give you some ideas. Because I know at first it was really hard to kind of think of these things, and so I always thought if there was like a huge list, it would be really great to kind of go through. But um, Dow Rods, which is the sticks, are for our younger kids, we have sun, we call them sunbeams, S-O-N beams. They came, the kids came up with the name years ago, and we stuck with it. But they do their Dow Rods in the light, okay? The L-I-T Dow Rods is in the dark with black light. So, our, we have puppets, we do it in the black light. Our glow wall, which we'll show you an example, it's black light. Splat is where the kids paint to music. Zap, I had to come up with another, we had to come up with several different ministry teams because we had so, we have so many kids 
that we just kept having to come up with new ones. So I came up with ZAP last year, Zany Art Projects. That's all it stands for. Um, and it's just basically they used to do fun art projects that they can learn. Some of them are gospel-centered, and they're learning how to share the gospel through an art project. A lot of times they'll make these for um, different things, like for our widows in the church or for we did a Christmas. We made them for our Lottie Moon Christmas Marketplace. So you just kind of have to think outside of the box. Um, Servant Ninjas, it's one of our favorite teams. Again. Servant Ninjas, um, they came up with the name. Again, it's these are kids that are going to have, they're not one that want to be up in front, but they have the gift of helps. It's a servant role. They stuff our eggs for our egg drop event. They, um, they do blankets for the disaster relief. The lady comes in and they teach them how to make the blankets. You know, they just do a lot of service projects. They just made, um, snack bags for all of our missionaries. We just got finished with our missions conference this weekend, and so they made things like that. So just anything that has hands-on project, that's a huge one. Lego Mation that you just saw. Audio visual media. Um, one of our kids that started out as a fifth grader doing um, audio visual now works in our main sound booth in the sanctuary. And it's because of the training he got here, and now he works in the sanctuary. And which is the whole point, is to help them train them to be able to serve in the church and outside. Photography and video, going around um, taking pictures and also taking videos of different things. Praise team, band. One year we had a bunch of kids that were sixth graders that played the guitar, played drums. They, they were very gifted in that, and so we had band, a ministry team that was a band. We've only done that one year because we only had one year that we had sixth graders that actually could do all that. So. Um, connect, we have children's church once a month, and so we have a connect ministry team, and they plan the whole children's church, and they lead it once a month and so they do the whatever you know the music the drama the missions and they plan it every Wednesday but we only have it once a month that'll be the LIT guy mm -hmm. we'll yeah this is LIT uh, ballooning which I told you about um, you can do gospel ballooning it's a favorite favorite one face painting you can um, share the gospel or share Bible stories with face painting and um, there's a whole ministry of that where kids learn to do a face painting thing and they're telling a Bible story and we take that on mission trip with us. We did that in San Antonio at a block party. So the kids are telling Bible stories as they're painting their faces. Um, Master Trade, I already told you about. They make things. They um, made the tables. They made picnic benches and tables. And we took them down to the church that we serve on mission trip in the little inner city part of San Antonio. And they needed benches in their playground. So that's what our Master Trade worked on all year. And we took down brand new benches. And the kids wrote scriptures all over them. It was pretty cool. So... Um, stomp, it's a very interesting one. Um, it's interesting. Uh, it's, it's loud, but there's lots of different ways you can do stomp. You just Google it. It's too long for me to talk about. Um, percussion. Type of dance. Stomp, it's a, yeah, it's sort of. Um, they do a lot of beating on trash cans and lids. Yeah, it could be dance, but ours hasn't been. It's just <laughs> lots of loud banging to a song. Yeah. <laughs> don't put it into your office. Yeah, percussion. Um, love, love this. So we don't call we call our we call it kid blitz when we take it on mission trip. But it's very important to me that we never call what our kids do a performance. So that's just my thing, and so I always want them to know that they're leading in worship. So we call ours a Christmas night of worship, and the kids we do something at Christmas or spring night of worship or a night of worship led by our Hillcrest kids, and. So our kids sing collectively all together. And so we have percussion as a ministry team. And so I always try to find a song that they can just play the percussion with the song. So we have a guy that comes in and we bought a set of drums, little drums, and they do all sorts of different percussion. And then guitar ministry team. We started that two years ago and you have to invest in that. That's why I said you can't start all this at once. Okay, this is something we just started two years ago. Found somebody that would invest in guitars for us and bought us a set of eight guitars, kids guitars and found a guy that um, I, I didn't even know he knew how to play the guitar. And he goes, you know, if you ever want to start a guitar ministry team, I'd love to do that. And I'm like, you play the guitar? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, we're starting a guitar ministry team then. So, But they play along with our kids singing as well. And then drama. So those are things that we've done here. Um, any questions about ministry teams? How many of those do you do at one time? Those are all ones you've ever done? We have 14. 13 or 14. 14 right now. So, yeah. You limit them to about seven or eight. Hmm? You limit them to about seven or eight kids. Right. Wow. Some of them may have more. Most of them we try to keep pretty low. But yeah. 
We just kept having to have, we kind of had to have a lot. We keep having to add them just because you can't let your classes get too big because then it's not really effective, so. We put a dozen in and it gets unruly, so mistake. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna ask one simple question again, but yeah. every adult that, that um, leads this training, I mean, obviously they have to have the experience in that. So if you have someone that's guitar and you need to know how to guitar right. or drama, they've had drama somewhere. Right. Okay, so that, that's the... Yeah, but some of them we, we kind of, I mean, some of them, like Zap, you just need to be crafty. We just found a mom that we always saw post things on uh, Facebook. She was always posting all these great projects. So I approached her and said, hey, I noticed that God has really gifted you in <laughs> projects and we're starting this team and I would love to be, allow you to use your gifts. You know, I don't ever go up to somebody and say, hey, we really need this. Because I feel like that God gifts these people for them to give back to the church and serve. So I always say, hey, I noticed this about you and would love for you to join our team. I'd love for you to be able to use your gifts in the church. And so then they're like, oh, yeah, of course I would. So, yeah. Don't ever apologize. Don't ever beg people. Nobody wants to be on a team. Of, you know, they don't want to be that person. So always, you know, let them know, hey, God, I see this in you, and you need to be using that to serve the Lord. So. All right. Do your ministry team leaders also, some of them, Um, up until last year, no, um, but we have two leaders that begged me because they actually started out as DG leaders, and they love that, but they also wanted to do a, a, a ministry team, so I went ahead and let them, but normally, no. I don't like them to double because while our disciple group leaders, while our ministry teams are um, working with the kids, our disciple group leaders meet together and pray, and it's a time for us to train them and you know meet together, and so opposite Sometimes, but let me say this, okay? We just, the Lord has just blessed us with a lot of volunteers. So if you're at a church and you're like, we don't have that many people, then let them double. Because, I mean, you want, you want it to happen, but it is hard. Would you say, Clint? It is hard on them. But these are, these are college students, and they're, you know, yeah. they don't sleep, and they just wanted to. And I think what you've learned, I don't we learned, is you get a really, it's difficult to communicate. It is. And it's just a sweet time with those, you know. Then when the disciple leaders are with the kids, those ministry team leaders are meeting. And so it would be hard to do that. And we've never had to so far, except these two college students. They love it, so I let them. But, yeah. how, long, how long do you do in the ministry training? How long, how, how in the evening, we do um, 45 minutes of ministry team training, and then we all come together for worship, and then we do 45 minutes of disciple group. Um, 20, however many weeks are in the book, 20, 18 weeks for the big semester. Yeah, 18 weeks. We pretty much follow, we don't ever stop. So if we don't have, like last week we had missions conference, so we didn't have, we call it Wednesday Night Live, so we didn't have it, but they continue in their book. Parents are like, so we don't do anything? I'm like, no, remember it's about having a relationship with the Lord. Every day you go to him. So it's, Jesus doesn't he doesn't go on vacation. Yeah. So, yeah. So we take a break for a couple weeks over Christmas, and then we, we do it again. We have a big kickoff. I have another parent meeting. I try to use my parent meetings as trainings as well, you know, just to kind of pour into them. And the kids go, they watch the commercials all over again. Because sometimes we will have um, a ministry team in the fall, but we won't offer it in the spring. So we try to change it up. Kind of helps our leaders. So maybe I have a leader that says I'm not available in the fall, but I'm available in the spring. So I'm like, great, we'll offer yours in the spring. Okay, anybody else? All right. So this is the Kid Blitz. If you want to click the, the, the mouse oh. on that, that video there, okay. there just click around the top. This looks like maybe a stomp. <laughs> to do. The paint is like 200 bucks a gallon, but it's a lot of fun. Kids love it. This is glow in the dark puppets. That's a big favorite of ours. So our first year we didn't know what we were doing and we just watched, we did pretty much mimic that. 
because we didn't know what we were doing. So it's okay to kind of, you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you copy this, you can find it online. Yeah, but try to include your kids on the process, you know what I mean? Because they, they have great ideas. So this could be um, our dowel rods sometimes do this. This is just a black one. Did you have? Yeah. Those stretchy belly puppets are great to have. You can do a lot of things with them. They are pricey, but once you buy them, you just pick. What we do is we choose one new thing to invest in this year, and then we do it the next year, you know. She wasn't paying that fast, though. That's flat. Very worshipful. And then you might have a little praise and worship. If you have kids that love to lead worship, then that could be a team. The moderator. Not to the moderator. Well, I guess not. Okay, all right. So, ministry involvement. As the children's ministry leader directory, your, your role will be to find or to create opportunities for the children in your ministry to serve. So, look for obvious areas where they might serve. Um, we've talked about some of those things. You know, you can start out, I think somebody mentioned, you know, you can find areas for them on Wednesday nights. You know, or whenever you're doing your, your ministry, the bucket master, the ticket master, hospitality, welcome. We have our self with check in, the door monitor, set up, clean up. Some kids can come early. If you have some kids that their parents are always bringing them early and you're like, we're not ready yet, well, put them to work, find them a job to do. They can help. Okay? Don't be afraid to offer them challenging roles. Um, and you've got to balance that. And one of the things I was going to say, you also have to balance the roles of, and um, if you have a lot of teenagers, so we have now 39 CITs. We can't get rid of these teenagers. So this is a testament to pay to the program. We have 39 7th through 11th graders because we start, my daughter is one of the oldest because we started, started here when she was in the 6th grade. She's now 11th grade. And we can't get rid of them. They love it. Okay? It's because they have ownership. Because they're a part of it. But you also have to balance the roles with adults and the CITs. Because you want the CITs to lead, but you also want the adults to feel like they're doing something meaningful too. So it's, it's kind of a balance. But, so don't be afraid to give your LITs and your CITs the role. Don't only give them simple jobs. Yeah, I mean, it's like somebody, if you came and, and gave of your time, and the only thing anybody ever let you do was push the chairs in, I mean, at some point, you're going to get more pushing the chairs in. So continually... Find things um, for them to do and provide them with proper training. Don't just give a job to kids and don't give them specific training of how to do it because kids don't think like we do. So when you say, you know, go put all the buckets out, that's not enough for them. They need to know where you want the buckets, what time you want the buckets out, how you want them to look. You have to give them very detailed instructions or you're just going to walk up and find all the buckets in a, on the floor, you know. Provide simple job descriptions for them and don't assume that they'll know what to do without proper training. Allow them to be a part of the planning. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, I'm not doing a good job on that. Okay. Um, allow them to be a part of the planning. Um, we've had ministry team leaders um, that they come with the plan already and the kids are not a part of the process. That does not help them at all. That's not the point of what we're doing. And so they need to be a part of the entire planning session with their leaders. Allow their job to become their ministry. So we use the word ministry servants. You know, you serve. It's not, we don't ever use the word work. Try to get work out of your vocabulary. We're serving. This is a ministry. Um, and it's not a job. And ex oh. expect excellence. Kids can do a lot more than we give credit for. If you'll set the bar up here, they'll reach it. But if you only set it here, that's as far as they're going to go. They're only going to go as far as you set the bar. So set it really high, and I promise you, they will They will go to that level. Even the ones you think will not. I mean, I, there are years, last year was one of them. At the beginning of the year, one of those fifth graders came up. My LIT directors came to me, and they were like, 
we are not taking them on mission trip. Are you kidding? I wouldn't take them out of this church, you know? And I'm like, just, they'll be, you know, and it happens. They surprise us every year. By the time we get on mission trip, out there on the, you're, these kids that you couldn't get to push a chair in the right way in the church, you see them out there and they're just leading. Um, and that's when the Holy Spirit takes over. So everything you poured into them takes off. Oh, uh, well, um, did I forget the last one? Oh, yeah. Expect them to follow through. Um, hold them accountable. It doesn't do any good if you don't hold them accountable um, to their job. And so if, for instance, if they um, were supposed to set up something and they forgot part of it, don't. It's Yes, is it easier to do it for them? Yes, but that doesn't teach them anything. So go get them, have them come back, and follow through their task. Um, and as they are faithful in small things, allow them to go to the next level. Um, and that's what we tell them. If they say, well, I want to go do this. You know, it's like with our CITs. As well, well, how come Ford gets to lead Legomation? Well, Ford has been serving for several years. You know, you be faithful in the small things we give you, and then you'll be able to do that one day. And so, same thing with your Nehemiah kids. So you've got to plan that out, and you've got to really figure out, okay, what can my first graders do? Kind of, we just kind of had to section all that off because otherwise, you're just randomly doing, you know, giving different kids at different ages things. So kind of. In your mind, after you've brainstormed with your team and you've thought of all these different things that kids can do, then you say, okay, what could first graders do, second graders, third graders? And that way you have a list and you're organized in your thoughts and you're not just randomly giving things. And that way they can see a progression. Okay, as a first grader, I've served in this role. And sometimes fourth graders are still serving in a first grade role, but, you know, that's just who they are. So um, anybody, anybody have any questions? Thank you. I was going to mention uh, in the appendix of the book, and I had mentioned about the candlelight drama that outlines in the appendix of the book there. That's a really cool. If you're talking about the Christmas program you do, uh -huh. candlelight drama, they read the story of the Nativity and they light a candle for every part mm -hmm. of the story. And uh, it's really good. You don't want kids lighting candles and passing around, but they can do it on the stage. And right. And then you can incorporate gal and puppets and those things, Christmas music. It's really very worshipful. It became kind of a tradition in our church. I don't know if you did that. A friend of mine showed me years ago. So it's and the, Yeah, the sky's the limit. There's so many things. And really the best ideas come sitting around tables like this, you know, and talking. I say the best ideas are the ones that you took from somebody else sometimes, you know, but they're shared. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're here for. And so don't ever, I mean, we've been, like I said, if we've been doing this six years, we do something twice a year in addition to our Kid Blitz and the Mission Fields. So that means we've got three different programs that we've done for six years. So we've done lots of different things. And so sit around and talk with these different people and get ideas. And then, and when you, when you sit with your team and you start brainstorming, I mean, just like the ballooning, I mean, she was like, well, I don't do anything, but... I, I do. Some, what about ballooning? You know, and I'm like, well, perfect. So it's just talking with different people and finding out. So. Okay. Hey, uh, while you're out, Mary, would you share kind of what a normal Wednesday night looks like? Mary's going to come and share a little bit. Kind of what you do. Okay. What does it look like when the kids come in and, you know, uh, how you, uh, I guess, the, if you're talking about the application process. Okay, so when kids come in, we have our buckets all set out. Um, so we have our LIT buckets set out in one um, place, and we just use crates, and they're labeled, you know, LIT year one with their leader's <coughs> names. And they come in, they drop their books off, and then they go straight to their ministry team. And that's when they're doing their training with their ministry team leader. And, oh, the one thing I did want to talk about, um, I didn't, I wanted to go back, when it said secure the proper space. It is very, very important, that whole communication with your church staff. We are we literally take up every room um, minus this one and the gym on Wednesday nights. We are everywhere because our small groups, I mean, and I tried, you know, I had to explain it. I had to be very, you know, I said, I know that when you walk into this huge room and there's only six kids, you're wondering why we need this room. But it's because they need a small group to meet and we have to have an individual room or at least a space, you know, that they can kind of have. But communicate, communicate, communicate. Really think out location of your rooms, especially if you're doing splat, you need to be in a room that has a sink. If you're doing black light, try to find a room that has no windows because it's kind of hard to um, do those things. So anyway, okay, so they come in, drop their books off, and they go to their ministry team training and they work with their uh, ministry team leader. 
they we always encourage our ministry team leaders they're supposed to start out with prayer and then i also have them recite their verses um, as they walk in the room so they recite their verse and they're all going to be different because you might be in a ministry team um, with the first you know five first graders and two second graders and a fourth grader so their verses are all going to be different that's okay as they walk in they're supposed to say their verse so it's another opportunity for them to recite their scripture and so they're there with their ministry team leader for 45 minutes while that's going on all the disciple group leaders after about 6:10, they go get all the buckets they take them and i have a room for our disciple group leaders and they're meeting in there they're checking their books okay and then i have a designated um person on this team that leads them in a devotional every week so they he leads a devotional they do prayer requests and time of prayer and then when there's trainings and stuff or things that i want to talk to him about um i have a director over near my kids and i have a couple that is our director for lit and so they Kind of will go in there, and and then sometimes I go in there. So a lot of times I'm dealing with parents. So I do, I like personally, I you kind of have to find what you really what what your gifting is. And for me, I'm highly relational, and I love to be able to connect with our parents. So I lead all of our parent meetings, and I like to be at the front as pa new parents are coming in to kind of visit with them one on one because I feel like the kids aren't going to be successful if I can't know where they're coming from in their home, and that kind of helps with when you have discipline issues and different things like that. So that's what I'm doing on Wednesday nights. Carrie. Yeah. So when you talk about you're dealing with parents, are you just talking, you're not having a parent meeting every week? Well, let me just tell you, no, in the past, no. Okay. We have enrolled a new family on Wednesday nights pretty much every week this year. So at that point, you are I'm on, the... now I don't have a parent meeting every week, so what I usually do is I try to visit with them a little bit and then because I don't want, I can't obviously have a full-blown parent meeting every week, but I do have to communicate when they're signing their child up because I want their child to begin right then. So I do have to kind of communicate a lot to that parent at that point, and then I'll say, you know, in three weeks we're having a parent meeting, and then all the kids that have signed up from that point, then they have to come to a meeting. So, and I hammer them. I make sure they come to a meeting with me because because otherwise they're not going to understand the whole thing. They're going to treat it like homework, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so anyway, my disciple group leaders doing their books and everything. And then all of our Nehemiah kids come to a room and do worship together. And all of our LIT kids go to another room and have worship. So we have worship leader for our LITs, worship leader for our Nehemiah, and they all worship um, separately. Sometimes we do it together. If we're working on a song um, for our Christmas night of worship and I want all the kids to sing together, sometimes we'll meet for a couple of weeks all together so I can teach them a song. And I help, that's kind of one of the things, I, I love music, so I used to teach the music here before I got on staff full time, so I still kind of, pull, sometimes I say, oh, I'll do this song, just because that's a way for me to connect with the kids, so. Um, so after worship, their DG leaders all come in there, and then they, we dismiss them, you know, by leader, they take them to their disciple group, and then they meet with them for 45 minutes. When they enter the room, they're supposed to say their scripture, then they start out with prayer again. And um, we kind of provide our team, our disciple group leaders, with a lot of games, um, memory verse games, because it kind of helps. And so we use, we kind of just have a collection of things that we've done. We'll go through, we have all the verses. So my staff, my paid staff, during the week, they'll come up with games or different activities for them to do just to help encourage the scripture memory. Because by the time they get to the ministry team time it's seven o'clock they're tired it's been a long day so when they come in the room we kind of like to do some kind of active game to either review their scripture or the main truth for that night so while they're meeting all of our ministry team leaders collectively come together and have a prayer time together and so a lot of times we'll be talking about the next Thing, or what worked, what didn't work, what supplies do you need. You're going to spend more money on your ministry teams, um, depending on what you're doing. Um, if you have a cooking ministry, oh, I forgot. We had a cooking ministry one semester, and it broke the bank because this lady went over the top. And so, she, and I didn't realize she was doing all this until she turned in receipts. And I was like, oh. But it was great because we took soup to the widows and made muffins for the firemen. And, I mean, it is a great team, but you kind of have to, she bought so much stuff, so. Um, and then at the end of the night, the ministry team leaders, because we're all over the church, you can't have parents going all over. That would be crazy. So at 745, 
everybody brings their kids back and then they get picked up in their regular Sunday school classroom because otherwise it'd be crazy and so and I keep our doors all shut parents can't come to the halls until all the kids are back and then we open them up and they can come get their parents so that's typical not at Hillcrest can I ask you questions yeah. concerning your um, old ministry team okay. maybe more your discipleship group leaders the, the, the adults do you have like training for them do you have a certain standard that you have them they must be baptized spiritual? oh yes do you have a relationship for a long time can you tell, me, tell us mm -hmm. a little bit more so about this is just pretty standard for any volunteer role they have to be a member of the church for six months they have to go through an interview with myself or somebody on my staff and they have to go through, they have to have background. First of all, let me do an order. First, they have to fill out a background check and a ministry volunteer application. And there's tons of questions on there. And then once I get that back and their background check is cleared and I read through their thing, then I schedule an interview with them. And then after that, they get a email with a link and they have to take ministry safe. And that's a... I won't go, if you want more information on that, I'll go into it because it'd take me way too long. But it's a basically um, sexual awareness uh, prevention online program that you can do. And it's very good. I can go into more detail later. Um, so after they do that, then when I sit with them and interview them, I kind of find out. Like, why do you want to serve? Where are your passions? What do you feel gifted with? You know, why do you think God's calling you to this ministry? When you do all those things, the whole ministry safe, I will put a plug in. I used to bypass some of that. I'm like, oh, I know I'm, you know. But the thing is, for a pedophile, when I researched all this, that's a deterrent for them. Because if they go to a church and you're doing all those steps, they're like, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And so anybody that would be a potential threat to children, they're not going to go through all that. They're not going to wait six months. They're not going to go through an interview. They're not going to do all that. They'll take a background check easily because they can pass a background check. But they won't do all those other things. So, anyway. But that's, they have to do all those things. And, is that what you asked? That's what I asked. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yes? So, where is, is there a lot of money involved in there? So, is the church provided everything? Or how do you know? Well, it comes out of my budget, but I'm very blessed. Um, again, our pastor is just, he is my biggest fan. So, um, I've never had to worry about that. But it is, it is expensive. It's $5 a person just for ministry save. I think it's $5. And then there's a fee for background checks, obviously. And that comes out of my budget. But it's important. It's worth it. And, you know, if you are on church staff somewhere or serving somewhere and they don't do those things, um, I would love to visit with you more on that. And if you're like, we don't have the money for that, you need to go present this to your pastor. And it is it is. And um, churches are the number one place that um, a pedophile will go to. And, and do, you, do you charge the kids as well per, per year? Or we charge. We only charge um, again because my budget yeah. is I'm, yes. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the ET groups. You know, they are in the balloon team, and uh -huh. we have tw twenty weeks. They have need the material and they buy all kind of material. Yeah, it comes out of it comes out of the children's budget. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah. And so you, you only do, you do what you can do, you know. Our first year, we didn't do a whole lot of these things. I mean, we did a few things. We didn't spend a lot of money on that. But then we, our first year, I think we, we took, the, what we do every year, I try to think ahead when I'm planning and what new thing do we want to invest in. So that year, we had no puppets, and we knew we wanted to do puppets because we knew that would be a huge draw for kids. So we invested in black light puppets. You know, the next year, you know, we invested you know, well, we did cooking. We didn't know we were investing in that, but we have a bunch of cooking supplies. <laughs> you know, one year we did guitars. One year we did the glow wall. We didn't do all of those things in one year. Yeah. yeah. And I think what happens, well, we, what I saw is people saw the change that was happening to kids. It was very easy for me to go back. I, I almost crippled my budget in 13 yeah. years of ministry because I could go back in and say, well, you know, this mission yeah. trip, this many people have trusted Christ. Right. And kind of like Charlie said, there's no bows or anything like that, but I could go in and say, we are doing things that are changing lives. Right. And so people would, they would buy and people would donate. I mean, yep. Would make, make oh, yeah. There's cars. several, there's just people that you can go to and say, you know, we really feel like the Lord is wanting us to do guitar ministry, but I need six guitars. Would you consider purchasing one? And sometimes they're like, oh, we'll purchase all of them, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you provide us with those names? <laughs> no. <laughs> what were you going to ask? The big key is keeping it very simple. 
Yes. Out, yeah, don't out don't out overwhelm yourself. your team or yourself. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Start out small. Right. And we did, like our first year, we did we just did praise team, and we probably had 10 kids in there, and we just let them all rotate who was going to get up the next, you know, and we they led worship during Wednesday Night Live the first year, you know. But we don't have praise team anymore, but we have connect, and it just, it evolves. It evolves. So don't feel like you have to have all of that at once, because <laughs> that will stress you out. Yeah. My question was, um, do you have the kids coming on the military team? Do they have to pay like a yearly annual fee or something? <clears throat> yeah, so we charge ten dollars, um, which doesn't the, cover the year. Yeah, ten dollars for the year. And, I know other programs charge fifteen, and that includes like their books, their shirt. We provide a shirt also, but we we were charging we were charging ten dollars, and that included their shirt. Now we're charging. We've been doing this for several years. Most people have their shirts, and then they were saying, well, we already have a shirt. And I was like, yeah, really $10 didn't cover the shirt. You know, it only covered the book. So we charge $10, and if they want a shirt, then they had to pay $5 for the shirt. That's a lot of money, though. It's not a lot. And you know what I tell parents? You know, any I've never really had many balk at all. And if I know a family situation, then obviously we're going to scholarship them. But if parents balk, you, you know, you can ask the question and say, you know, that or the average person spends – a thousand dollars a year on their kids in sports, or a thousand dollars on their kid in in dance, and you know that's not that's not eternal. It's not going to last. It's not lasting. And so, you know, can you spend ten dollars a year to for us to invest in your child and their spiritual development? That's eternal. That'll last forever. They're not going to balk at that. So ten dollars is not. We probably could charge twenty, and they would still do it. But can we charge ten? We have a great. We are, I'm very blessed at Good the budget way. that we have. So yeah. Just an estimate, could you give like the general budget in terms of like per child ratio of that, mm -hmm. like, that you subsidize from the ten dollars? Oh. Or you can just give us total number of kids and bracket wise of the kids. Maybe I could look that up and tell you. Okay. <laughs> just curious. Like just for Nehemiah kids, no IT or their whole. No, no, just for Nehemiah kids. Yeah, let me look that up and I'm not going to know that by memory. So. But, I mean, it, just the literature alone is one cost because you're printing everything and folder. We use folders. Um, so just all that alone is one cost. And you don't have to do shirts, but we do. But I had to kind of go. We were doing Awana, and I had to switch over. And, and it was really hard when I first started. I was calling it Little Explorers for preschoolers and LIT. And then everybody just started calling Wednesday nights LIT. And even the little, like I had preschool parents. Now, is it time for LIT? And I'm like, you're a preschooler. And so I realized that, but I talked more about LIT because of the mission trip. So that's when we went to Wednesday Night Live. And underneath Wednesday Night Live, we have Little Explorers for preschoolers. We have Nehemiah Kids first through fourth and LIT for fifth and sixth. So. Yeah. What do you do for preschool? Just a little. Do you, do you need to, do you want me to talk about that later or now? Go ahead. Okay. So we've kind of evolved. I wrote my curriculum for the first three years, and you can't keep up with it. It's just too much for us. And so we came up on um, orange curriculum, and we use First Look. Okay. Um, I cannot say enough great things about it for our preschoolers. The parents love it. There's, it, it's, we kind of set it up. Miss Noma actually serves with our little explorers, and so we kind of set it up to try to model what we do with me and my kids. So they kind of have their story time, which are disciple group time, and then they do their music time, which is their worship time, and then they do their application and their fun stuff, which you could kind of equate to ministry team. And so they rotate through rooms and do scripture memory. But first look is great. You're going to pay a scripture memory fee and then print everything.